The House of the Dead remake has sure taken its sweet time to arrive on the Nintendo Switch. Now originally revealed at the Nintendo Indie World Showcase in April 2021, Forever Entertainment took on the task of rebuilding this original arcade shooter from the ground up. Now after a bit of a delay, the game is finally here, but is this a worthy remake of a beloved classic? That's what we're here to talk about. Danny from the Famicast here. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications. Leave us a comment down below and we may read it out on our bi-weekly show called the Famicast. Today though, we're taking a look at the House of the Dead remake on the Nintendo Switch. We're really talking about visuals, performance, the controls, and a lot more in this review. Now, if you're watching this video, chances are you probably know what to expect when it comes to gameplay in a House of the Dead game. Now, just in case you don't know, I mean, the House of the Dead remake is an on-rail shooter where you take control of this government agent and you're basically investigating some mysterious disappearances at this old cruddy house. Now, of course, things aren't always that simple, as you'll run into a house full of monsters that you'll need to take out to save any of these survivors. Now, for remake, you'll likely feel right at home in terms of controls. Now, controlling the on-screen reticle can be done in one of two ways, either via the control stick or gyro controls. You can shoot with ZR, reload with B, and center the cursor on the screen with Y. Gyro aiming is where it's at here, but it's definitely not without issues. Now, for most of my time with the game, I was using the Switch Pro Controller's gyro functionality. Now, I think it should be noted that it is possible to play through the game with just single with just a single Joy-Con with up to two players. So, I mean, two Joy-Con, I guess. But I didn't have anybody to play with, so I really can't comment on that aspect of the game. But I think you should really go in knowing that these are not pointer controls like you might have found obviously you know on the Wii or if just thinking about just the arcade version like with a light gun I mean you're actually controlling the on-screen reticle by moving the controller around you know the gyro sensors and stuff pick up your movements now by and large I think the gyro controls work but they can sometimes get a little bit jumpy uh, especially when things are getting kind of hectic on screen I found that in early levels or when I was facing enemies that didn't move very quickly I was digging out these guys pretty easily. I mean, however, when things would get a little bit more hectic, the reticle just seemed to get a little bit jittery. Now, it's kind of hard to know if this was an issue with the game itself or just my gaming ability. I mean, either way, it feels that way to me, so I think your mileage may vary here. Now, things are pretty simple when it comes to modes. I mean, of course, there's this main campaign to play through, and you have a few different gameplay options when it comes to difficulty and scoring and stuff like that. Now, a horde mode is also available. Now this throws significantly more enemies on the screen as you're going through what amounts to be basically the regular campaign just with more guys to take out. I think for vets of the series or people who are getting bored with breezing through the main story, this could give the game a bit more longevity. Now on top of the two modes, there are a number of unlockables and achievements to collect as well as leaderboards to track your high scores. Now unfortunately for the leaderboards, they're local only. Now the addition of some kind of online element here I think would have significantly helped people stay hooked uh, to compete against friends or other top players from around the globe. I think the lack of online multiplayer here in general too is also going to be disappointing to some. Now this isn't just a simple HD texture update of the original game as you can see by the gameplay that you've been watching here. I mean things again have been rebuilt completely from scratch for this remake. Now the character models here I think they look pretty good and the environments are believable enough. It's it's probably not going to blow you away but I don't think it really has to. I mean, if you're a fan of the original or light gun shooters in general you're going to probably enjoy what's on offer here uh, when it comes to visuals. Now, Remake does offer a performance mode that can be activated from the options menu. Basically, this ups the frame rate significantly, however, it does make the game take a little bit of a graphical hit. Now, an example of this would be more pop-up appearing on some of the environments, such as in the grass in the opening cinematic. You can kind of see that here. I'm kind of playing these side by side so you can see that. Now, I think this is something that could probably be overlooked by many if you're just looking to play the game with a, you know, in a more smooth fashion. I mean, regardless, nothing really stood out as like detrimental to the experience either way to me. So I thought that was fine. Now on the audio front, I think things are, are pretty fantastic here. And I really enjoyed the creepy Halloween-y tunes in the main menu and the zombie sounds, shooting sounds, all that stuff are fine. You know, the voice work, it's kind of cheesy, but I mean, if you've ever played a game in the series, maybe Sonic's Overkill, which was very aware of the serious yet cheesy tone that the other games set. Well, anyways, I think you're going to feel right at home here. 
You know, honestly, I'm kind of torn on the House of the Dead remake here. I was a huge fan of House of the Dead 2 on the Dreamcast and Overkill on the Wii. Now, I really enjoy the pick-up-and-play nature of the genre, and I think that aspect of the series is nailed here in this remake. It is, however, hard not to mention that the controls can feel a little bit off at times, even if you're pressing Y to recenter that, um, you know, the radical. And I, I think this is really kind of compounded whenever things are getting kind of crazy on the screen. Now, not only that, but lack of online leaderboards and multiplayer, it's kind of a little bit of a letdown. But still, if these are some things that you can get over, I think there's still quite a bit of fun to be had here with Remake. But let's go ahead and turn things over to you guys. Did you pick up the House of the Dead Remake on the Switch? What do you think of it? Are you excited to see the House of the Dead 2 Remake coming to the system too? Be sure to sign up in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. As always, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. We hope that it was helpful. Uh, if you were thinking about making a purchase or you're on the fence or something like that. Uh, if you like what you see, please feel free to drop this video a like. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe. We've got tons of podcast reviews, look at Switch games like this, and a whole lot more. Again, this is Danny from the Famicast. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later. But you will never, ever defeat me. Say hello to my masterpiece.